Recording is being recorded. Welcome to the session, and I am really honored to be facilitating this session with you and hopeful that you will have the opportunity to really look at how we design assessment rubrics and mark schemes. I've added mark schemes, although we didn't have mark schemes here, but because there's, there is that um, dichotomy that we need to make when it comes to looking at those. So uh, primarily, you would know that you are successful into this session if you um, can identify the components of a rubric uh, the differences between, um, you know, the different types of rubrics and the appropriate uses, benefits of rubrics in assessment. We will, then we will explore tools. I think we want to really explore tools that create rubrics. And I think the most exciting part is that we want to give you the opportunity to work in group uh, to actually design um, a rubric. Um, and then we can actually use uh, AI to help us with that. So good afternoon, all. Um, thank you for joining, and we are really excited, and welcome to all persons who are joining us. As a, as a quick icebreaker, I know some of you may have done this before, but I just want to do a quick icebreaker. Um, um, let me just go ahead, and in the chat room, you can put uh, which type of grader are you? Uh, I know my Roy Tech colleagues may have seen this already, but uh, certainly you can put it in the chat. In the chat, put it in the chat. I want to see which type you are. Are you a combination of these? That's a quick icebreaker. We'll do this. Um, and we will continue from there. Okay, so we're seeing realist, we're seeing, um, uh, we're seeing optimist, we're seeing so many different types. Oh, and it, it's coming in, coming in. All right. So we see an optimist. Uh, great, thank you. I'm seeing more optimist than anything. <laughs> All right, more optimist than anything. Alana. Roland, Kyra, why are you an optimist grader? Please hold the mic <laughs> before we, we begin. Uh, you ask, why am I an optimist? Very difficult to answer. Um, I guess I just happen to see the bright side. Huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. Alana. Richkins. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And anybody I who's selected, go ahead. I'm an optimist because, sorry, I think I'm an optimist because sometimes the students, they would have it right in their own words, but theoretically speaking or putting it into theory, um, it's, it's a little bit off, but they sort of got get the gist of it. Okay, thanks for that. Any realist, Ricardo? Any realist would want to explain? Well, um, I teach statistics, <laughs> <laughs> so so in a sense, grading to me is also a reflection 
of my practice. So uh, whenever I, I give an exercise and I look at it, I, I can have to reflect. I don't want to look at those who do well, but those who might be struggling. To see right. That, you know, in terms of effectiveness um, in, in the students achieving their learning outcomes. So that's Thank you. Thank you. And, and from this, I'm picking up that persons are, are in the back of their mind are thinking of which one is fair to the students. And I think that's what, um, um, I don't know who previously, who it was previously we said, but sometimes you really want to meet the students halfway, perhaps they're not articulating um, the, uh, the, what they need to say. You know, sometimes words are so difficult for some of us, especially if they're challenged. Um, you know, in terms of the vocabulary and so forth of how they want to express themselves or the format. And so definitely this is where we certainly want to take um, um, note of that. Go ahead, Kayan. Kayan. Or Kainan, did I pronounce it? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. It's actually Kenan. Kenan, okay. So, so Leroy, I, I wanted to share a bit um, in terms of what I do. I, I work with persons um, with neurodiversity and, you know, how we essentially assess persons tends to be different. And that's why I would have said I'm an optimist, simply because persons that are neurodiverse tends to express things different from a neurotypical perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so hence the reason why, you know, just as another speaker would have said, I would have tried to understand from that other person or perspective point of view. Hence the reason why I essentially take on an optimist um, point of view. Well, well justified. Well justified. Uh, thank thank you. you for that. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Anyone else? And we'll have that that'll be the final one who's defending the where which type they are, because obviously, um, again. Uh, we want to be fair to our students, all right? Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. I mean, primarily what we really want to establish is that uh, rubrics are means of communicating specific expectations, all right? Um, and those expectations are expectations of assign assignment. They are sometimes referred to as scoring guides or mark schemes that adopt criterion base. It must be criterion based to assess pro um, on students, but what it does, it provides clear and standardized way to re to evaluate assessments, uh, assignments. Um, and we we certainly want to explore the idea that they are they offer a comprehensive way of um, addressing criterion based uh, um, um, that and all of us previously spoke about feedback. I um, mean, when we talk about what kind of grader are you, at the back of our mind, we were thinking feedback. And so rubrics are, are powerful ways of communicating, but they're more than that though, because uh, we recognize that when rubrics are used, they provide the opportunity for us to give timely and detailed feedback. Um, they really encourage the critical thinking. The students can begin to self-evaluate if they have the rubric before. They can measure how well what they have produced measures up. Um, again, it communicates the expectations. What do you expect, especially within that range? Um, one other thing I think is, is good is that it's something fair to do. Uh, and it, it, it provides consistent marking, especially if you are part of a... Um, different cycles or different cohort or different sections. You all teach in the same subject, but you all have a different instrument of assessing students. It should be the same. So if you have a rubric, a rubric could help you to address what we call inter-rater reliability. And so that certainly is something that we want to uh, address. Uh, saves time. And I, I know some of you can attest to that because if you are subjectively given or marking using a, a mark scheme or uh, just using a holistic approach, uh, having a rubric, especially if it's technology enhanced, and I know Natasha, Natasha, this is a good call for, um, I, 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 I know some of our colleagues here use Canvas, but some of our colleagues here use um, uh, Moodle. Um, uh, I'm sure we know that Canvas has uh, rubrics that you can enable and makes things so quick, very, very quick. Yes, Natasha, yes, you were saying something? That's, 
No, no, I was just agreeing with you. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. And um, it saves you so much time, saves you so much time. And when you use technology, you can move beyond the text. And I think there's some um, 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 that allows you to actually use more than just text. You could actually attach an audio feedback there. there. And I, I don't know, there was a time when Turnitin allowed you to give even um, um, audio feedback. But no, I think they've kind of re- market that as a different tool <laughs> as you know these these tools um they commercialize them from time to time and again the whole idea of transparency we really want to be transparent with your students in terms of how how they're going to be successful in 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 doing this assessment uh, primarily when we when we're doing a um on a, a, a rubric we we look at the various component. I think key here is the criteria. You look at this, you can all see that. Yes, no, yes, no, you can see it. Um, so this is an example of what an, uh, an analytical an, an analytic rubric looks like. And we're gonna look at types of rubrics, but these are parts, um, the criteria, obviously uh, these are specific dimensions of performance. Um, that, you know, so persons will, will be expected to, to look at. Then we, above that, you see the level of performance, and these are the description of the quality. So where you see exceeds the expectations, meets expectations, those are the level of um, um, performance, sometimes called quality levels, or sometimes called scoring levels, but they're all part of, um, of that level of performance, you know, and this performance space. One, one of the key things I like is the whole idea of um, the descriptors, which is the one in the middle. All right, the descriptors. So the descriptors here provides, and I, I like this, it provides clear and specific language that explain what it means to meet a particular level of performance for each of the criteria. So the descriptors writing that clear is so important because it's not only guiding you, the grader, it's also guiding the student to see, hey, this is how I'm going to meet. Um, uh, they wouldn't question that if if you if if certainly this is something that you want to look at. So the descriptors, very, very important that we address that. And again, I I I I, I particularly like the idea of being transparent. So when you are clear with your students. Uh, this is um, an important component that we really want to ensure. And we have the scoring strategy, um, the scoring strategy often, and then that's the difference between the max scheme. We're going to look at the max scheme and, and the rubric. You notice here that this actually have uh, 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 five, four, three, two, and there's no one, as you can see. But if you look at this, there is a problem with this actual example. Anyone wants to reflect? Anyone wants to reflect on what is the problem with this particular example? I'd really love to, to give a, a token if anyone can identify the issue with this example. Ones and zeros, Karima, it may so, but I, I, I'm, I'm looking for more. Anybody wants to try? Anybody else wants to try? I'm giving you a hint. It is it is hinted to the criteria. Middle ground, okay. The middle ground might be an issue in terms of who is passed. Good middle ground. Anybody else? A little more detail on what constitutes the expectation, Janelle. The criteria is subjective, okay. All right, Janelle, um, can you hold the mic? Hold the mic and give us a little discussion on what you what you mean by that. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. So um, what I'm seeing is, you know, exceeds expectations, meet expectations, approaching expectations and so forth. But, you know, there isn't much more expansion in terms of what exactly are these expectations related to I guess the assignment at hand, right? So, I mean, the student would be able to follow along as well. What are the expectations that they exceeded and so forth? Right. And I think where they would get the actual uh, assistance is actually in the descriptors. So you are right. 
So the descriptors should outline what the actual levels of, you know, what, what, what that actually address. So you're correct. All right. So without the descriptors, this is very, very subjective. Um, and, um, and perhaps the scoring strategy, Cairo. Um, but I'm still hinting, I want to focus on the criteria. There's a problem with the criteria. Um, anybody wants to wants to take a, 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 a juke at it? <laughs> okay, let me give you a hint. Let's suppose, go ahead, go ahead. Um, Kyra, go ahead. The, the criteria, depending on the assignment, cannot be so discreetly um, graded. Explain, so, what, what do you mean by that? You know, looking at content only mm -hmm. might not be the most effective way of looking. So what am I trying to say? The supporting evidence might be related to the content. The organization is might be related to the writing quality. So trying to put a number to each of those discrete categories might not be the most um, effective way of analyzing the actual submission. Excellent. So what would I do as a, as a fear and, and Kyra, you're, you're, you're right there. You're, as we will say, you're right there. You're, you're warm or to warm. And what would I use or what would I add to ensure that I am able to have that sort of rigor in there? Go ahead. I see one hand is up. Go ahead. Hi, Leroy, I was wondering, right? Um, I'm looking at the rubric against the learning objectives, mm -hmm. um, whether the organization level of creativity, writing quality actually ties back to that aspect of learning objectives. Right. And, and you may be correct. We don't know what the learning objectives are, and we don't know if these actual criteria match it, but we are, we are assuming that it is. And I, I want to go back to what Kyra was mentioning in terms of the, okay, let, let me give you a, a, a hint. Let's suppose that this particular assessment is for 20%. Let's see how you would address the gap in this, in this particular rubric, because that's one of the major parts. Persons would go ahead and design this, but they would omit this part, this particular gap. And, and you'll use rating and the descriptors, but it becomes so unfair. Okay, so what are some what, what am I assuming if I give a student a five in content and a five for creativity? Anybody? Are you saying that you it's should assuming that they got the full marks? It's assuming they got the full marks. That's one thing. Anybody else? But Roland? Uh, I want uh, I want to ask you assuming that each of these have the same weighting. Ha, ah, Roland, yes, correct, and Charlene got it correct as well. So uh, I I think this is where this is one of the major gaps when we're doing rubrics. We forget to add the weighting. So it took a while for us to discover that. In other words, content is weighted same as creativity if we give both of them five. Do we see that? Yes, no, do we? Do, yes, thank you so much. So that's one That's one of the major gaps in when we're creating um, um, rubrics. I think it's a major oversight on, on assessment or the assessor part if you ignore the weighting. The weighting should always be part because you certainly know that you may want to, the student to focus a little bit more on one part of the assignment and give it a, a stronger weighting. And their rubric should certainly um, have that, um, that aspect. And this is one of those things we, we address uh, in, in, in an effective rubric, all right? And that makes it reliable and valid because it, 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 it measures the assessment, especially since if you are waiting, um, all the same waiting, then we'll see that that may not necessarily be, be, be valid because a, a component of the rubric is much more difficult. And if you're giving it a five, then certainly the, the outcome, the students meeting those outcomes, it becomes a little bit unfair to them, all right? But effective rubrics include uh, uh, you know, clear description knowledge, 
uh, provide students with information about the, the expectation, reduce time. There's some of these are, things are being repeated um, and encourage peer uh, to give support to each other and can be used around the multiple um, 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 assessments. One of the things we want to consider is always the learner. It's always the learner. We want to un also understand underscore that there is a process in doing it. Are the, are the are students aware how you're doing it? Are you doing it on the learning management system? Is it going to be downloaded in a, a document and sent up, upload, those sort of things? Um, and again, the last point here, uh, weighted for each criteria is a huge consideration. Now, here's what. I know some of us have created, some of us may not have created, I want to go and, and we want to do a rank the development. How would you as a user, um, how would you as a user um, um, do rank the steps of creating a rubric? Let's see how, which, which would you start with first? All right, let's do this. This is a quick menti, um, menti meter just to see how we could rank. If you can do that, then that would be great. Let me know if you're seeing the code in the chat room. Randy, can you put it in the chat, the link? Um, I'll put it as well, the code there as well. Um, so you have that, that's the link. And you should rank, you should go ahead and rank. Um, the code is, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Randy. Stay on the screen. Let's see how you would rank the steps. All right. Roland is saying I'm able to access. Anyone else is unable to access? Ah, some persons are accessing it because I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. So let's drag this across. Okay, I'm seeing some of you. Charlotte is saying she can't access. So you go to menti.com and you add the code. All right. I'll give you more time for this. Charlene, are you still able not to access it? I don't know. Okay, five, four, three. Okay, no problem, Charlene, that's okay, that's fine. Two, all right. Now, let's compare this with, so we see most of you had determined the purpose of the assignment. And what practitioners tell us, the first thing we do is to determine and define the purpose of the assignment. So most of you certainly got, got that correct. And that's important. You start with the um, um, the purpose, and it's important to ensure that that is 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 um, this is clear. All right, and this is where the second step we are seeing is establishing the criteria. Establishing the 
criteria. And that would be include listing the product or the characteristics to be evaluating. Um, and then you determine the level, the scoring level. Are you going to use uh, numbers? Are you going to use uh, letters? Or are you using both? What, what are you going to do? Then you develop the descriptors. The descriptors is important uh, to each particular level. Uh, what, this should, what does this look like? And the scoring strategy, obviously, there and the comments are really at the uh, assessor's level. In other words, I am giving, I'm adding notes to myself um, what my scoring strategy should look like, especially if I am marking across sections. If I'm marking with a colleague, uh, this is how I am going to give students um, 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 the items, as, as well as placing a, a place for comments. So I think when we compare this with uh, and this, we I think this is a uh, a very good uh, a very good um, outline of what we what we did here. So I give yourself a round of applause for having it. Um, for the most part, I think most of us got that that the, the steps correct. All right. Um, one of the things I want to kind of uh, as a the marker is that um, there is the thinking that um, uh, some persons use what is called marking guide or sometimes a marking scheme, all right? Um, but rubrics are different to marking schemes or marking guide in that rubrics are, you know, they're more specific and uh, they, they provide a, a clear idea of mapping to a specific criteria that deals with various levels of quality. Um, and, and it, you know, it's a comprehensive list of expectations for each component of the task, as opposed to using a range, all right? Uh, and I'm gonna show you some examples in a while that which may be considered a, a, mark, a marking guide or a grading scheme. And sometimes we do that, which is good, fair enough, but at least it provides some level of consistency. All right. So again, when we speak of rubrics, rubrics should have those various elements. It should be it should be clear in in having those those various elements. For example, when you look at this, this is a rubric. But for some persons, if they don't have the the um, then uh, this is sometimes can be easily uh, misconstrued and or, or, or translated into a marking guide. Um, because you notice it has a range. If it has, if it didn't have the one, the two, the three, and four, then we could not have called this a holistic rubric. It would have been a marking guide. All right, because you have a range there. If, for example, the faculty is given perhaps a range, they are given fifty-five um, there for the person, and they, you know that's kind of holistic uh, way of looking at it. Then that makes this um, holistic rubric more a marking guide than a rubric, all right, than a rubric. But here we have some, some actual scoring in ones and twos and threes and fours, which actually is a range. So some persons may argue, this is a holistic rubric, um, but it's very, very wide. And, and, and certain persons use, use them for marking uh, research papers and, 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 and so forth, all right? Then we have uh, the popular one that we use, more popular one that we use is the analytic rubric because the analytic rubric uh, has a more granular, a more granular aspect. And what makes the big difference is not just that it has the, you, you, you have, for example, the criteria, you have the levels, you know, this is still uses percentages, but it uses the descriptors to actually uh, ground what uh, the the level of performance ground into the particular criteria, so as well as the uh, the the scoring strategy, uh, the scoring strategy. So it's important for us to see those various components. And then there is a third, uh, which is often it's it's actually a version of an analytical rubric, but it's more developmental. And what it does is actually this uh, describe the process of doing something developmental. Very, very much uh, from a professional, uh, uh, what we call um, uh, formative approach in terms of how the person 
has developed. In, in, in other words, we really want to allow the student to see how they develop in, in their reading or their problem solving, and that provides a level of um, feedback to the students. Again, uh, this is an analytical rubric, but it is from a more developmental standpoint. And then sometimes we could actually use an analytical rubric, our normal rubric, and convert it into a checklist. And, and but some may argue checklists are not rubrics. But if we go back to the definition where we said a rubric is a, a, a guide to communicate, then we may want to accept checklist, all right? And this may particularly be useful when you are making, want to make the assessment quite transparent. The student could actually self-assess whether they've met all uh, the criteria, yes or no, and certainly that can be seen from a, um, a binary standpoint, all right? But the research is pointing, this is very good for us to understand that there are times when I would use the analytic rubric and there are times when I would use the holistic rubric. Um, and certainly it's important for us to recognize that. And Javed is saying, Mr. Muhammad is saying here, development rubrics are excellent for vocational courses and perhaps even good for the approach for competency based. Certainly correct. All right. And we want to be ensure that you have rubrics that are mapping and usually very much tied to um, things like uh, your e-portfolio, professional portfolio, and, and, and so forth, all right? But there's something else. There's something else. Sometimes we as um, practitioners, and I, uh, I, I'm I sure that I don't know if you got the link for the resource. If you can put the link to the resource, uh, Randy, of all the resources, uh, handouts for this session here in the, in the chat room, um, I will also include an example of a score guide that I use that I think can be helpful. It's not there right now. But sometimes we take our, our rubric and we change it into a we change it into a score sheet. We change it into a score sheet. Um, and what it does, it gives us the opportunity to 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 really use a tool like Excel. Uh, some persons may want to use, uh, well, if I call Lotus 1, 2, 3, then you guys will say that I'm very dated and old, um, but certainly a spreadsheet and Google spreadsheet and so forth. So it's important for us to, to see where we could have, for example, a, a simple uh, a score sheet like this, where you would use, um, uh, you notice the weighting there is given, um, and a different example here. And it gives you this total weighting. So these are score guides. So these are tools that you can use to help you in your assessment. All right. So there are some resources. Thank you, Randy, for, for dropping that in the chat. Um, and then there are so many tools, folks. There are so many tools. Um, so many tools out there to help us. There is no excuse that we have that we should not be, um, um, you know, um, creating assessments without rubrics. All your assessments should have rubrics or mark, marking guide or, or you know or, or marking schemes because again the key area is communicating that expectation and also helping us, um, you know, when we are also coming to the actual implementation guide. I am excited. I know uh, my colleague, um, uh, Mr. Mohammed is here, but we are pleased to know that there are so many ways in which uh, we can focus on uh, using uh, rubrics in Moodle. So I'm gonna put this in the chat. All right, so you have that. Um, you, can, you can follow those to get further details. And I have a short video here. I'm gonna show this short video. Perhaps for our Roy Tech colleagues, Natasha, we could have a different session. Um, or I don't know if you're in a position to do a quick show and tell of the rubrics in, um, in um, turn it in, but we can certainly do that um, if, if you're available and and Dr. Time. Hill, just briefly, our wife, my wife, finally offers us down some on my phone. 
But we okay. would have covered rubrics in Canvas in a training, and I plan to do a video on it because Canvas actually um, allows you to score on everything using the rubric. So it's Excellent. quite simple. Yeah. Quite simple. Thank you so much for that, Natasha. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I think uh, the selling point for this is not just communication for students, but I'm happy you mentioned that simplicity of saving time for faculty, if they if they really understand that um, this is something that uh, you know makes their life easier, and they definitely are you all able to see the video now? Yes, we are. No, the video is less than two minutes. All right. The video is less than two minutes. And here it is. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed, by the way, for creating this instructional artifact. Um, it takes a little long time. But the good thing about this is that once you've created it, and there's a handout, I'm going to ask either Mr. Duku or Mr. Mohammed to actually give the link to the handout. The handout is actually in the folder but we're gonna post the link there for you nonetheless. So there's a handout as well, giving you the steps for the Moodle. Um, how do we actually create it for Moodle assignment? And you could also use an, an attached rubrics to your forums. You could also do that for forums. It saves you a huge amount of time for forums. In fact, once, once you enable that element for forums, it actually brings and pulls out the discursive um, element. If, for example, for each user, you will see the entire discuss, uh, whether they post it three or four times, you could actually evaluate that quite easily because you were able to attach a rubric rather than actually doing a very holistic, um, you can actually make this a very um, consistent approach in do, doing your uh, rubrics for the um, uh, for the um, standpoint. All right, I'm trying to double. I'm trying to do things. All right, still confusing. How? Um, so I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Mohammed, are you available to do a quick demo um, of how to attach? one to a forum i'll give you some time i'll give you some time we'll come to it because we really want to address um if not we will we will certainly do that but it's about the same process of attaching one for a forum and um we can yeah we can so certainly do that. so so thanks dr hill so these steps as you said for creating the rubric or, or yeah creating a rubric in a forum is pretty much the same for an assignment right um i could I could do a quick demo on the the assignment, seeing that you showed the video, I could just use the opportunity to reinforce because what happened, I don't know if it's just me, the video, it didn't show too clear on my end. Okay. Um, yeah? Yeah, go ahead. I, I'll... Okay. Sure. Oh, no, the key thing here, Kalima, is that um, 
what I meant um, to bring some clarity is that once you use, once you enable the rubric within forums, when you click on grade forum, it actually brings out the discussion for the, each particular person. So all the discussion around that particular, if for example, it was you, all your discussion, uh, all the interaction of your peers, um, when it comes to your name for, for scoring in the rubric, it pulls it out. So you could actually see that element or uh, those elements there, all right? Taking a while for the screen to share. Okay, I'm uh, I'm back. Um, this is the, I got bumped out there. I don't know what happened. Just Try screen. again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one of the poems I, I read as a kid was, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You all know that, that poem? Know? Yes, we're seeing. Very good. Okay, good. So um, let me just make sure I'm still logged in here. And I am good. So I'm 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 in one of my courses, and I want to uh, as a creative rubric for an assignment. Now the first thing I need to do is create the assignment, and it will be the same thing for a forum. You need to create a forum, all right, before you start uh, creating the rubric itself. So let's do that. To begin, you need to click on the um edit mode toggle. So you need to turn edit on. Once you do that, you scroll to where you want to exactly put this assignment. So for this demo, I'm just going to use the top section of this course. So once you click on add an activity or resource, you click assignment. If you're creating a forum, you select forum, All right? So I'm going to select assignment. Good. And as you all would know, Anything indicated with this red exclamation mark here, it means that it is required. This is standard through all different platforms. So right now, I know that I must give the assignment a name. Right? Now, one of the things you have the affordance of in Moodle is the description for the assignment. While it is not mandatory, it is advised. Similarly, the activity instructions, right? So you would want to utilize these two spaces here. And based on your design, your course design, you can have this description displayed on the course page, right? Also, you can as, um, attach files, but we are not focusing too much on that right now. We just want to look at the steps involved in creating your rubric. Now, here is where you need to select a uh, rubric. So this assignment, we are using points, but we are spe specifically going to pay attention to the grading method. Right now, by default, it's set to simple direct grading. We want to use a rubric. So therefore, we select the rubric. All right? And if you have, um, if you want to enable activity completion, please do so right here one time. So it's 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 going to uh, benefit you in the end and students as well. When you're done, you select save and display. And this takes you to now the root setting up of the rubric. Right, so before we actually create a rubric, let's just, um, do I have it here? Let, I'll, I'll briefly speak about it. Dr. Hill showed a, a, a slide with the parts of a rubric, right? So you have the criterion, you have the performance level and points, and then you have the descriptors. And one of the important things he spoke about as well is the weighting. So it will be a good idea for you to actually have this already, your rubric already created somewhere on a Word document, PDF, whatever. All right, you have it created. So that will make or speed up the process for you when creating it in my learner or even Canvas. So when you select define, 
a new rubric. Here again, you need to provide a name. Oops. And a description. And now this is where we actually start building the rubric. So we spoke about the path of a rubric. And here you can see in my e-learning, you have the criterion, you have points, which would be um, also very much um, in the same place with the performance levels, right? And the description. So sometimes, most times you're gonna have more more performance levels than what is already given to you here, provided for you here in my learning. So to add more, you simply click add level. And of course you're gonna have more here in the criterion section. So you click add criterion. Now I do have a rubric here. So I have my criteria. I have my description for each of the uh, performance levels. Right, good. So I'm just going to do some copying and pasting right now. So I'll copy this first criteria here. Sorry about that. And I will now select in the first section here and paste that. So I have my criteria analysis of instructional methods. And now I want to add the points along, along with the um, descriptor. So I'll just leave it as full. Well. I will not take that. I'll just copy the description. Here's the description, and I can insert the four here. Now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to copy and paste. Oh, well, I'll just paste the same description, descriptor, if that's okay. And let's just put three. Two, and let's add a new one. Um, right, good. So I have one criteria. I want to add another one. And the good thing about using the, the, the Moodle platform, it helps you with uh, distributing your weighting, right, Dr. Hill? So if persons are using um, my learning, there's no need for them to really go to the Excel um, resource that you shared. Yeah, if they're yeah. not, if they're not, then you, I, I, we definitely advise you to use that, uh, that document Dr. Hill shared. It's going to come in very handy. All right, so when I add a new criterion and I, a new criteria, I put it, I insert it here and now I put the same, I put descriptions for it for each level, All right? I don't even need to include um, four. I could delete and just have probably just three for this criteria test and what i can do is listen for test i don't think um it's the the weighting should be so high mark at a maximum they should get um three points so this is where moodle is going to help you calculate your weighting and distribute it um easily easily distributed okay. good so any questions before we move to the, the next step. Any questions? Feel free to turn your mic on. I, I cannot see the chat at this time because I'm, I'm using just one um monitor. Okay, so no questions. Right. So the options here at the bottom, the rubric options is basically um up to you. You as a facilitator, you select each one of these options as you see fit based on the needs, your, your needs, right? When you're done, you can select uh, save rubric and make it ready or save as draft. In this case, we're going to 
make it ready. And that's it. So I have the assignment set up. We have persons in the course. Um, nobody has submitted as yet. And it's as easy as that. Now, I if you want, Dr. Hill, I could quickly submit something and show them how they can use it to mark. Right? Yes. Uh, you want to do that? Yes, go ahead. All right. So let's just switch rule. You can do these things for yourself. <laughs> uh, just to make sure. Yeah, no, it's good because you want to make sure because, you know, students come and they say, well, they're not seeing the option here and there. You didn't provide this. It's a good thing to do. One of the good things to do is to switch your role to student and do a test. So students will see it like this. They will see the the actual assignment. If I had um, instructions on all of that, they would have seen it here as well. The right here, they are also going to see the rubric and how they are going to be assessed, right? Good, so I'm going to submit, add a submission. Changes. Oops. Yes, as a student, we need to click this button. Okay. Good. So I have submitted. And if you enable the activity completion, um, students will also see this green tick here. Done, saying done, I completed it. You will also get that in the analytics as well. So let me switch back my role to teacher. And now I'm seeing here, one student submitted, it needs grading. And I can do that. Now, when you click grade, We'll bring up all the students in the course, but there's a another method. I'm just going to search for Java. Okay, Java submitted this assignment. Okay, um, it's looking okay, looking good enough. All right, let's it's time to mark. Now, if you notice, the rubric is here. But I don't like this view. It's too small. I can't read everything like this. So what I want to do is I um, pop it out or expand the, the view, right? And here now I can select accordingly. Right? I also have the availability of providing comments. Oops. I mean, this is not a good example of a comment, by the way. <laughs> But you know where you can add those comments. Comments here. And when you're done, when you're done now, you just click Save Changes or Save and Show Next if you're marking all the submissions one time. And you also have this option here to notify the student. By default, it's enabled. Hmm. Seen it here? Yep. That's it, pretty much. And we click Save Changes. And there we have it. It's as easy as that. Any questions? Now, you still have the ability to annotate on this actual assignment as part of the assignment um, features in, in grading features in, in, in my learning, right? In Moodle, right? Can you, you can still annotate here, leave comments, etc. But the rubric itself gives you, gives you the ability to assign the scores for each of the criteria accordingly quickly um, and put a comment based on e for each one of those criteria. Yeah. Any questions? Was was I too fast? Do I need to go back? But 
Dr. Hill, you there? I'm still there. I'm still okay. there. And, <laughs> okay. and Paul, Paul, thank you, Paola, for keeping the silent, not keeping the silent. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. Column is I get it for assignment. So can you just quickly do one All right. for forums? All right. So we have. You want to make All sure right. Karima, Karima, Karima is comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing All it right. for forums because that's one of the areas that we see persons not using it in. You know, so that'll be great. Just show us how to do it for for forums now now for for this you will not see the evidence of actually all the communicate and dialogic inquiry for one student because it will have to uh take place first for you to see that affordance and i think karima what i was saying is that once you create it once you create the rubric within for the discussion forum and you click on a particular student you will see all the communication and back and forth for that particular student. Um, so you're not seeing everybody's own, all right? Uh, you can create it using Turnitin assignments, but I know Turnitin used to have a rubric, but I think they've made it, uh, uh, someone can correct me if, if, I, if I'm wrong. They've actually pulled out some of those components and made a commercial a call, a, a commercial product called Gradescope, I think. And they, 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 um, so I still think some elements, uh, is there, but they've, you can certainly use, um, um, uh, a similar, similarly in, um, in, in, um, in, in turn it in. You can certainly use rubrics in turn it in. All right. The grading components and so forth, they've actually take out, remove some of the elements and added a program called Grade Scope. And they're asking for money for that, you know. But what we are promoting here is free stuff. Yeah. Uh, you have it in in Moodle, and so we certainly want to promote free. stuff. I like free stuff, and I know that many of you do as well. Um, free means power to you. All right. Okay. So go ahead, doctor. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> okay, so you click on activity, add an activity or resource from the picker. You select forum. Give the forum a name. Provide descriptions. And availability, discussion. We want to turn activity on as well. And then we have whole forum grading. Make sure all of these things are um consistent throughout your course. If you're using for your grading throughout your course, you're using scale. Um, if you're using scale for one assignment, you scale for all assignments. If you're using points, use points for all assignments, please. All right, and then here is the grading method, the same option you have with the assignment. All right, so we're gonna select rubric. And then save and display. And it brings up the same um, rubric settings. So here I simply select define a new grading form from scratch. And you give the rubric a name. Oops. And it brings us to this section here. Here we put the criteria, description, points, points and add another one. Let's see. see. I've seen this before, not applicable. All right. And of course, that's where I read zero points. And you want to add more? Oh, 
Gut. And then save rubric and make it ready. Good. So now persons when they submit, uh, do I need to go through the submission of a discussion and all of that? It would not really have anybody in the forum. To... Right. <laughs> and that's one of the challenge. You wouldn't see that. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, so this is what I was given uh, the examples that if you when you go to the grading, I think what we could have just show them the grade. Um, once you have it enabled and you have to enable it, yeah, you have to tell it, use this rubric. The good thing about this is that you could actually set this as a template that you can use in your other courses. All right, Javed, so there's that mm -hmm. option if you can show them. I think this is very good because you don't have to redo the, 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 the rubric. Once you have it in the system, you can say use this as a template or save it as a template. And mm -hmm. when you have a new course and you want to actually use the same outcomes for a discussion, you could say, okay, yes, adopt this rubric in my new course, which means it saves you time in actually creating a, a rubric. Um, so that's a sales point for, for using. And I think it happens both in, in canvas as well as in Moodle, mm -hmm. right? Natasha, correct me if I'm, yeah. Yes, that's actually very accurate. Um, Dr. Hill, while we are on this topic, just uh, to, um, confirm with you, um, is it best practice to have a range for the points, um, in the rubrics? Well, well, especially one. Right. Um, the, the key thing here is some LMSs do not allow you to do weighting very nicely. So what, what happens is that we use our points as a way of signaling the weighting. So if we just put one and four and so forth, it means that um, if, if in one area category, we are actually equaling all the criteria areas when you put a one rating. Correct. So what some persons actually yeah. do is actually put the full points. So what would be a four? And if you have 10 points for that area, you actually put the 10 points within that four area. Um, above in the heading for the for the for the rubric header, you can actually put the four and so forth. But the actual within the uh, the descriptors, it will give you the option for actually putting the specific points that would map with a weighting. So this is where you will have to do your calculation. How much is 12%? So sometimes here's what I, uh, Javed, you're still sharing your screen, right? No. Okay, so let me just share my screen quickly. So I'll share my screen quickly. Uh, I, I, I know it's, it, it's, it's also for the Canvas users, you know, to be consistent, con to be consistent with your weighting um, strategy throughout the course, because it, in the end, when it's time to, calculate the overall marks for the semester it it messes up in the in the grade book so <laughs> sometimes you find um wait how the student get in 200 percent or 200 points yeah you know you know yeah. so can you see my screen can you yes. all see my screen anybody yes, yes. no yes, yes. Is okay so here it is i have assignment one assignment one is worded 40 percent Mm -hmm. Notice on the left, I have um, I have these, and these are specifically read, are rated to outcomes in from the course. So learning outcomes from the course, designing assessment uh, um, assignment, um, perhaps um, having level of transparency, creating an assessment that is transparent. Mm -hmm. But you noticed the the authentic part. Are you all seeing my screen? Yes, no. Yes, yeah. Right. So the authentic assessment, which is what I want them to be able to do, is weighted 12%. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Do that? And I want them to create an analytical rubric, and that is weighted at 10%. In the end, I also want to give some peer assessment, but I've only put that as 5%. So, so, so for actually taking part in a peer assessment uh, activity around this, uh, they get that in the end, all of these should add up, I hope my math is correct, um, to, to that, all right, to that 40. 
All right. But you notice, let's start, for example, with alignment between learning outcomes and assessments. You notice, my, for exemplary, what did I put? I put actually six points mm -hmm. because the six points here will equate to 6%. I'm just doing that to make it easier for me. So what I would have done is to take, take, take the 6% and divide it into three and decide on how many points I should give for each area. Now, you notice I don't have any points up here. I may choose not to because I, this was just a tool I'm using to, to grid. So I could have said uh, this is one, two, and, and, and three. I could have done that. But the important thing for me is to use, since I'm using the learning management system and, and, and Moodle, I need to ensure that the weighting is represented and represented good by the points. Uh, yes. Is that clear to everyone? Crystal. Is that clear? Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes, doctor. <laughs> um, I need I need to hear from you if you are here. Yes, doc. Yes, good. So it's important, and so it may take a little bit of math, um, calculations. Uh, so where you have your, uh, you can do this in in the background. Obviously, you could share this with your students because they would see that how you're being transparent about this forty percent. All right, this forty percent. And so I actually deconstructed my 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 percent at points. <laughs> Some persons and back and forth and so forth may complicate it, but I personally would just um uh, use that as as points. So in the system here, I I have percentages, but in the end, this entire stuff here in the in the LMS is reporting it as percentages slash points. All right. So it's important for us to see that. Um, that 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 little affordance right there. Uh, so Kalima, can you hold the mic? I'm not seeing the chat too well. I, I noticed you say something. Go ahead. Yeah, so I noticed when you're doing the breakdown of the points, for example, example in, in exemplary, you have the maximum points or the maximum percent in each part. So six, seven, 12, and I guess in 10. And then in developing, you have four, 4.6, eight. So that's a bit different from when way back they were teaching us how to do rubrics in that uh, the numbers are changing for each of the exemplary developing and undeveloped and also that you're not being continuous. So there's no five, there's no <laughs> 3.5, there's no zero, there's no one. So that's why right. if it if, is good practice, if, if you can do that as opposed to like jump from six to four or seven to 4.6. Uh... And, and that's a very valid question. Very, very valid. In fact, in some cases, I would perhaps have a different one. I said, did not respond or did not do, and perhaps have zero. Because I can't, if, if in the system I don't do that, it will report the lowest as two. So you want to have a next area saying, um, a next area here saying, uh, did not respond and then award the zero because in the system you really want to have that. No, um, the the reason why this is designed this way is because I know very well rubrics in Moodle want me to be finite around it. So it wouldn't be 2.5. If I want to put this at 2.5, fine. fine. So it's not a range. It does not do the range. It actually does do specific. So uh, this is where some interpretation, obviously, if you're doing this manually, you have the flexibility to give those middle way points. So um, that's one of the, the disadvantages of using Moodle rubrics because Moodle rubrics expecting you to give a, 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 a finite score for each of the criteria. It wouldn't tell you, okay, um, you know, uh, those sort of things. Is that, is that clear, Clary, Clary Um. Yes, yes. Yeah. So when you're using rubrics in the paper based or using a word document, you are more you have more flexibility in giving the points in between. And I'm not too sure if that's the same challenge in Canva, uh, Natasha. If you're still with us, I'm not too sure if that range is is, but we can explore that. We can certainly um, explore. Dr. That. Hill, sorry, my phone was second. Um, in Canva, yes, you. You, what our faculty do, they would have the range um, or points in your rubric, but when you are, you, Canvas allows you. Dr. Heavy, you hearing me? Yes, yes. yes. Hello? Yes, yes we're, we're hearing, you. hearing you. Hello? Yes, we're hearing you. Are you all, you all hearing me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. 
Um, so as I said, I'm on my phone. We have no Wi-Fi in the office, so it's back and forth. Um, I was saying Canvas, it's, it operates the same. You can't put a point, but our, what our faculty do in the rubric itself, under each um, criteria, they would have, they could put the percentage, but when they are calculating it in the Canvas course itself and marking an assignment, it, it allows you to click on the rubric once it's attached, and you could even you can change the score. You can put the score on top, and Canvas will calculate that that score on top of all the points. So it will do the calculation for you once it's attached to the assignment um, in Canvas. Okay, this is very helpful. This is very helpful, and I I'm mindful of that. Um, okay, so go ahead, go ahead. What 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 I was to do is that I sometimes what I do to make it easier myself is that I actually assign the point like a percentage. So let's say I am given <clears throat> um, marks, let's say formative marks for people doing their homework and stuff. And every day I am I'm given at one point, when I record an assignment, I record the actual point. So all the assignment has all kinds of things they're doing, but to it again, and a reward for doing the assignment, then I do it. So when it adds up, I get it to add up exactly like, a, oh, my final score. So my mark sheet will look like my canvas um, sheet because I would calculate everything in a way that when I have the assignment, it reflects the actual um, contribution to the overall mark. Yes, Earl, 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 thank you so much for that reinforcement. That's exactly what I do as well. And if you notice, that's what I did for the example. You notice that? Because whereas the assignment is weighted 40%, yeah. I actually mirrored that because I don't have to now translate it in the system, what is X of 40% and that kind of thing. It makes it very straightforward because it makes it less, it makes it more transparent to the, to the learners as well. <laughs> All right, Natasha, you were saying something? You're on, I'm hearing you. Sorry, I didn't realize my mic was still on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Javed, go ahead. Go ahead, Javed. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, Dr. Hill, you know me. I like to be a rebel sometimes. Rebel? So this is, yeah, this is your rebel, <laughs> rebel coming out here. So, permit me, right? <laughs> or not. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> so, 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 why you create a rubric? Why do you create a rubric? For me, I create a rubric for transparency sake. Right, yes, I also create a rubric to make things easy for me and the students, right? And yes, I know a lot of teachers, they mark in such a way that they give, they can't give the finite number, they must give a point something because <laughs> they are of the view sometimes you can't get perfect in the section, leave room for improvement, or they probably have valid reasons, really good reasons for not giving the full mark. But there's a reason why you have clear descriptors. Clear descriptors for you to mark and for the students to actually read before they submit the assignment. Mm -hmm. Right? So why must I get 2.5 when, or why must I mark as a teacher a student's um, assignment 2.5 for a criteria? when the descriptor is clearly telling me that if they do this, they get in two. If they do that, they're going to get three. Mm -hmm. So there's consistency around that. Right. So, yeah. So you, so you, so then there's no need to be um, messing around with 0. 0.5, 0. 0.75 <laughs> and, and so on. The point and, makes it a little bit more subjective. <laughs> right. But, 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 but you see now, yes, you might give a student two, but you want to get them 2.5 because they almost make it to three, but they still didn't make it to three, right? What you can do is give them two and you leave a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Javed, had you done so-and-so, you would have gotten three for this. Yes. You understand? So that's me. <laughs> that's how I operate. And, um, you know, just and my two cents. <laughs> and that's certainly, that's certainly correct in yeah. practice for consistency's sake. And you want to be fair because hey, everybody gets that you know you know so you wouldn't be subjective to the rate of uh, um um giving a point over another person because they think okay the almost as you mentioned, 
there is that consistency. And I like the aspect of, of where you mentioned in uh, Javed about the comments. So this is where we can use our comments. And in the LMS, you have a spot there for each of the criteria to put in comments. I, I know that sometimes this is enabled and some persons disable it, but I would always encourage, I always would encourage you to consider um, adding the comments there. Now, I know in some instances, and I know in Canva, I, I can't remember, um, but in 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 um Can, in, Canva, Stockdale. Canva, sorry, I get yeah. I, I get confused when in Canva, Me too. Canva Me too. all the time. <laughs> but in Canvas, thanks, thanks for that. In Canvas, I I'm not I'm not I'm trying to remember if they have the audio. Component, yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, Dr. Hill, they can do audio, video, also they have annotation tools where you can mm -hmm. make comment on the submission. So you have a lot of options. This is so good. Yeah. So a person should be making and taking advantage of that because it's important exactly. that you can give feedback in multiple ways. You don't necessarily have to be very wordy. <laughs> and I, I would I would just I would say this to Dr. Hill as a mm -hmm. student, right? Um I I sometimes I look for the marks, yes. But as as a student, when I get when a when a teacher uses the, the, the facility and rubrics and they provide comments, man, I don't even pay attention to the points, the marks. I go directly to those comments. And it helps me a lot. As a student, it helps me a lot because when I do a, a, another assignment, I pay attention to the feedback that I I received from the prior or previous assignment. You know, so it's, and, it's, and Javid, it's a win-win, yeah. Yeah, just to, just to add Javed and Dr. Hill, with Canvas, the neat thing too is when the lecturer provides comments on the submission, the student can reply and respond to those comments also. So it's and a back it, and forth with them, yeah. Right, yeah. And, and for Moodle, guys, it's the same. Yeah, it's so, the same. It's a win-win for everyone. And that's that, so that discussion and can continue in there, but you have to enable it, I think, in, in Moodle, you have to enable yeah, that yeah. component mm -hmm. there. So, uh, hey, this is a sale for you to make. And the thing about it is that once you set it, you can use it and reuse it and you use it and reuse it. You don't have to create it over and over again, especially if you repurpose your course. You can actually, rubric actually comes along with the assignment that you repurpose your course in the LMS. All right. So that comes in. It does not omit, omit that. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, clear. And I'm sure it's clear now. I'm using a different approach. Now it, it's clear that in the education context, the future is here, and that is using artificial intelligence. All right, using artificial intelligence, using artificial intelligence as a, a co-designer, as an assessment coach, as an assessment. Uh, assistant or on a, uh, because you could have an assistant in the classroom, create a rubric for you and then you, uh, you, you evaluate it. I am thinking likewise, you can use AI in doing so, but I'm reminded, I am reminded in order for us to make good use of that, we should be, uh, we should make sure that we are using it to the best because one of the things that we want to encourage is the social responsible use of AI and it hallucinates. Uh, what the research has shown and um, both at Google and others and there are different ways in which, in which you can prompt, but it is important for us to have a good prompt and where you as an educator understand the need for you to actually create a proper prompt to ensure the hallucination, you know, the, the fake things that come from the AI is reduced. And I am really happy uh, adapted from Tasman uh, 2023 in this approach that works pretty okay in that you have a context in the, um, in the anatomy of a good prompt, you have a context. This is where you set the context as much as you can give it context, give it a context as much as you can. Obviously, there is a task. You need to be clear about the task. Um, um, and then you give it the instructions how to go about doing it. And some of that, for example, may include, do you want it to pause? Because sometimes the, 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 the AI 
um, generative AI will just go ahead and do it. You want it sometime to pause. And that's one of, one of the things the research has actually shown. When you force it to pause, it, it gives you a higher chance of being um, um, less mistakes, all right? Less mistakes. And so this is something that you can do. One of the things you can also do is to pause and say, um, please let me know if you understand what I ask you to do. And so you may clarify. Um, uh, this step is added to really confirm that it understands what you expect for it to do. Because oftentimes, if you don't, it will just go ahead and and and. So, whereas you really want to put this, the, the 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 instructions, you also want sometimes to clarify. Do you understand what I what I'm asking you for? And then it will say yes. You want me to create? It actually, sometimes repeat, and sometimes you will see some clarifying in sign here. And and you can go through that sort of dance between yourself and the AI in that you refine. You say no, I, that, that's not what I meant. Uh, please refine this and back and forth. Again, this remains a social responsible thing because obviously, as uh, instructors, there are persons who are using AI. And there are tools. I actually have an example of a tool. I can't get to it right now because I'm in a different mode of showing, but I'll put it in the in the chat once I get out of that mode. Um, so here's here's a very short one, not that extensive, uh, but I'm giving it a rule. You notice here, I'm giving it a rule. You are my assessment assistant for my university level course. I'm saying good. So it's notice on it, it's a university course. It knows this role. Help me design an analytical rubric, the type of rubric I wanted to know, you will need to know for my assessment. I make it very short. This accounts for 20% of the course. All right. So you need to tell it. First, pause to prompt me for the outcomes that the assessment rubric will be used to create the rubric. All right. And then I ask it further on, ensure that the criteria aspects for the rubric is weighted. Now that's very wide. <laughs> I can, if I want to give very much detail, um, give each of the criteria and tell it how much the weighting should be, which is what I should have done. But I've left it so to be very, very wide, which is means that it's going the less you, the more information you give it, the better the response is going to be. Is that clear? Is that clear? Let me see, let me check the chat. I'm not able to check the chat. Um, also eloquently elo um, communicated. All right, is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? Um, yes, sir. Well, this is yes. So um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna ask my colleague um, to post to put. Uh, I am not gonna show you because I think this is straightforward. Put the link for three of the most popular um, um, chatbots or generative AI bot, and. Uh, what we are going to do, we're going to put it in the, I'm going to advance to the next screen. You're going to do a group work. Uh, you're going to work in your group for 20 minutes. One person can share their screen. Um, I did ask you to work with one of your assessments so you can actually use one of your assessments. Um, use your assessment and actually use generative AI to create an analytical rubric. And then we'll come back and reflect. We want to reflect because obviously we want to have that opportunity to really share your responses with each other. How is that? Yes. How 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 are you? How comfortable are you? With that yes. No. Yes. No. Hello. That's okay. Thanks. That's okay. That's okay. Thanks. Great. So I'm gonna ask my colleague uh, Javed to help me with the breakout rooms. Um, and if we could assign the uh thirty of us here today. Mm -hmm. Um, how many persons in the breakout room? Um. We have we're having problems with students submitting hundred percent AI work and we are fighting to prevent discourage that, but we are now being encouraged to use AI to come up with rubrics. Can't we come up with ourselves or do we say that yes you can? Yes, we can. Um, um, um Jeffrey, and I didn't go deep into the 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 the, the debate, but again, as I said, the social responsible aspect. Um, this is just a demonstration. You can or cannot do um create a rubric from your outcomes but i really want to demonstrate how quick it is that you can start with something and then modify it uh, from that standpoint but yes outside the institutional policy uh individuals are still using it and what we are doing here is preparing you to be social responsible um without without ignoring the fact that yeah, it's a tool that persons are using all right Je jeffrey but we can continue that debate 
<laughs> we can continue that debate. And I think one of the things that we have to do, Jeffrey, is really teaching students uh, those sort of things, how to use the prompt engineering to ensure that they, uh, you know, that they, uh, because uh, th th there is evidence to show that they are a hundred percent, and you can you can tell you can tell. But how are we not teaching them the ethical use if we are not training them? That that's part of the literacy part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I mean, I, I, we can con continue the debate, but I really want the the, the groups. Um, Cairo, no problem. Okay. I okay. yeah. That. I I have the groups. Um, Doctor. You Hill. have the groups open. You, would so, you do you mind just giving the instructions again? I know you're sh you're sharing it on the screen, but just in okay. case. Okay. So in in your group, you, what you're going to do, one person can volunteer the one of the assessments that they have that maybe you don't have a rubric for, um, or you can create one on the go. But I did request as part of the memo that you come with one of your course, one of your course outlines, your syllabus. And you are free, notice the language, you are free to draw on AI as your assessment assistant. Um, uh, and perhaps persons who are, I mean, I, I use, I do not use ChatGPT that much anymore because it's free and I, I, I'm more drawn towards the co-pilot and I create, use the creative mode. Um, so the creative mode actually gives you less of a hosting because it, it actually uses the API from the 4.0, which is the paid version of OpenAI's technology and tool. Mm -hmm. All right, so I prefer to use the copilot um, and use the creative. I click on the creative mode, which gives me a greater sense. And I've tested it over time, um, over time. Um, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. So let me know when I agree, you Jeffrey. open rooms. I agree, Jeffrey. So are we clear? I want put one in the chat if you're clear on what we do, what we need to do when you go to the breakout rooms. One person can share their screen. Um, one person can share their screen and um, and make it collaborative. We're not clear. Only only Earl, Earl, only Earl is clear. <laughs> Earl is the only one that's clear. Anyone? Earl is the only one that's clear. <laughs> Okay, so colleagues, this is what we're doing. For the next 20 minutes, you're going to um, design an analytical rubric for any one assessment, all right, um, that you have. Now, you have assessments in your course, you have a course outlined. You can see, okay, fine, I, I, you, you may not have a, a rubric, but you, or you maybe have a mark scheme, but in this case, we really want to create an analytical rubric. And in this case, you're being encouraged to use uh, AI as your assistant. All right, and so we want to give you twenty minutes for doing that, and and it's a kind of opportunity for you to to see how how well it does it or how bad it does it. All right, Javed, you were saying something. What what's an analytical rubric again? So, uh, this is where this is where the uh the the system should know that the analytical rubric will contain um the various elements. All right, if you look at the screen here. Mm -hmm. it, it actually contains a criteria. Mm -hmm. um, it has the um, you have the descriptors in the, in the, in, the, in the middle. You have the actual levels. You notice that you actually you could actually have one uh, inadequate here. It says fifty to fifty nine percent. I, mm -hmm. I ideally some persons may argue okay because you have a percentage, um. But usually in the LMS or systems, you normally have numbers tacked on and so forth. So okay. certainly it gives you an idea of the level of, of performance, uh, which are both words and percentages, as in this case. Um, and then on the left, you can see here, left column, you see the criteria. And following, you have the descriptors that match to each of the um, uh, levels of performance that we have there, or the standards, as we would see. All right? Thanks so, so I'm yeah, opening so the rooms now. Open up the rooms, mm -hmm. yes, and we will take 20 minutes for that. Brandy, if you could do the time for me, that would be great. So we'll do that and we'll open up the rooms. Um, Perhaps the rooms are very big though, small. I want to make them bigger, Javed, but that's okay. Make the um. rooms... You mean more more rooms? No, no, no. How many Less rooms? rooms? Four rooms. Four. Yeah, four rooms four. are fine. Yeah, four rooms yeah, are fine. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, Bus Busan's arm um, dropped out after I played yeah. Rooms there. <laughs> All right, so I, I guess I need to see in room four only has two persons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I need to move them. I'll put them in two two of the other groups. Yeah. I think we'll have three groups. Yeah. I'm still seeing four. Oh, so you're changing that one. Okay, mm -hmm. great. All right, thanks. That's good. So I could pause the recording. How do I do that again? Welcome back. Um, I know that some of you, um, we didn't get, I don't know if it, how much more time you think you guys needed. Did you get through to do your whole, anybody? Yeah, yeah we got to some, to some extent, yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent, Earl. Thanks for, thanks for that okay. feedback. Um, but you notice that this is something that may take longer, um, but I, I want to be as, um, open as open as flexible. So I'm going to ask the first group to kind of take us through the process. But reflectively, I want for us to think, um, um, what was the whole process like? And I want to know, do you think that this was a social responsible way of drawing on a tool like AI? If you did draw it onto AI, um, how, did, how do you feel about that? So group one, group one, I think room one, I think you had Candice, you had Janelle. Janelle, I think you led, led out on that. Uh, Patrice Prout, um, Ricardo. Natasha, go ahead. No, no Dr. Hill, so we, we had, okay, Janelle, right. Um, Kenan, you wanna go ahead or you want me to go ahead? Sure, sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so this was a totally different experience for me in terms of the development of a rubric because traditionally I would have sit down line by line in terms of drafting this rubric. And I find with the right description on chat, GPT, et cetera, et cetera, it was able to churn out relevant information based on the um the, the assessment that we wanted to generate and it was we did this literally within 30 minutes a lot of significant work yes there is the requirement to do a lot of fine tuning and to ensure that it's relevant and valid um to you know the intent of the assessment but it can definitely save some time bringing some you know relevant details to, to this process yeah this is this is excellent um because you i i see where you have your your waiting your waiting broken down um and it's the guide is there so that's that's great anybody else from the group wants to reflect any any key takeaways from doing this from this process do you think it was socially responsible to use ai to do that all right do you think it was Um, Doctor, hello. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I like using the the chat at first, the AI at first to create the most of the stuff. But I found that at least for me, if it was me doing it on its own, after the initial thing, I will have just gone on my own and fine tune it instead of keep going back to the AI to try to spit out what I wanted it to do instead of. I have a focus and I know what I want, so I'll just skip the AI and go ahead. So I think it was good for the first draft, but if I wanted to fine tune it, and then in terms of discussing what we could mix or what we could change, I don't think we had time because it was so focused on doing what, on trying to get the AI to do what we wanted, that we didn't have time to discuss more about the rubric itself. Okay, because you would have to read it and, and actually ensure that the outcomes 
um, that you originally had, actually it, that is aligning with that. So I guess that alignment part you'll have to verify. So you can't accept this at face value. So I'm, I'm happy you're saying that, Karimna. Um, so I and I appreciate that because what some persons would use, okay, if I continue to probe the the or refine, which is part of the 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 um, framework that we explored earlier in terms of the prompt engineering, um, if I continue to do that, it means therefore it's much more uh, greater use of AI. All right, in 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 fine tuning it. So this is something from our personal social responsible standpoint, you could say, okay, fine, I use a very first draft. And then from there, I personally will address and, and use it further from there rather than actually having the tool. So that's that's an option. But again, you are, you have that you have that that tool for helping you to 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 do that. Any additional persons from group one? I really appreciate the reflection from both uh, persons. Um, any other group members want to reflect? Is this something that you would use? Yes, no. Um, and how would you, how far would you go about using it? Yes, I so th this is my first experience with with ChatGPT with with AI. Um, it it will it it will save me about eight hours because like. <laughs> Because over a number of days, but I do I do this line by line as someone explained earlier. Mm -hmm. It really will save time. Yeah, but there are some modifications that I would have to make with it. Yeah, you would have to make the modifications. Yeah, uh, so you can just accept it as um, um and and one of the key critic criticism of of AI is that uh it it actually you can own. <clears throat> the elements because um are copyrighted because the AI is not a person. So how do you now go ahead attributing that? And I think this is the key contentions for some persons. Can I use it without um, um, and letting persons know that yes, I did use ChatGPT to help me? You acknowledge. I think that acknowledgement is part of the social responsible aspect, uh, especially if your supervisor did give you. So yes, I did. I did use ChatGPT to help me, and these are the things that I created. Um, or you're just gonna say no, don't use it. So, but thank you, Ricardo, for open, you know, for for and 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 validating that that it will save you. It will save you a tremendous amount of time. It will certainly save you. Um, I think if there was time spent um, taking the AI to do what we wanted, just discussing the things to improve on the rubric. Okay, certainly, yeah. All right, so thank you for sharing that screen, Janelle. I think it was, a, I mean, I didn't go through it in a fine tooth, fine tooth comb, but the, the narrative definitely is, is worthwhile to go through and make sure that it actually aligns with the language um, would, be, would be something that we would want to address. Um, I will tell you that the accuracy that you got with ChatGBT would be, it would be better in Copilot and in the creative mode. You, it would have been good to compare to do to that and then compare doing a co-pilot and see what the differences would be. Um, or even using Google Bad. No, Gemini. I think they changed it to Gemini. Um, those three different tools. So thank you, group one or room one. Thank you. Round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. No, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> I'm seeing the applause, but you're not going wrong. You have to move your hand, even though I'm not seeing you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And group number two, if you could show your screen as well and show us, I I did um, know that you guys had a max scheme at first and then you, yeah. So go ahead, group number two. And group number two would have been Alana, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis, for volunteering. Earl, Jeffrey, or um, Olson. I know Olson came in late. Roland, um, Alana. So if you guys can go ahead and report. And reflect. Uh, we report, reflect uh, at the same time. Okay, we were working with a, a math team. We didn't do much in terms of um, the creative part. Um, this was from a programming um, course. Um, so you, you will find that the output will be very sketchy because I think we did not do the work in terms of, we didn't really rate the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't really, because one thing, we, we, we didn't, the, the, the the way it's written is just very like an outline. Mm -hmm. And so it's, 
to, to the, 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 the generator is also unfairly generated because some of the terms are very general. Uh, like you have like works and meet objectives, right? And, and so what we also discovered is that if the, if the academic person is lazy and is trying to, so, so this will be like a good example of what not to do. <laughs> because what would happen is that if you put in, um, in the, 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 the order of magnitude that you would get is the depth of field that, that you input into the, into the tool. And therefore, so for example, um, when we did a first run, you realize that, that when it got the levels, um, some things, well, it's very sketchy, as I'll show you, right? Because um, the questions we asked, for example, like we had doc documentation and we had before code, between the lines and code of the code, suitable variable names. But it's, it's I know the, le the levels are reversed, right? So it should be the higher level first, all right? But you recognize that because of the, of the of what was put in, um, it, I think it, it, well, we agree that it should be a little meatier in terms of in, a little more clear. And we also looked at and discussed the fact that even one, one useful um, learning outcome of this activity is that it would even challenge even some of the criteria that you're putting in. I'll give you an example. So if you look down at the bottom, you see where, where they have compiles? Yeah. Right, so you have, you have compiles? No. Compiles is, is almost, like I would say, is binomial in a sense that it's either a program either compiles or doesn't compile. So, so yeah. to get four levels of compilation might be illogical. Okay. You understand? Well, what, what if, for example, you have evidence of syntax or perhaps... Right, so, so, so that we discussed, so it, so it, should, it should probably be broken out yeah. into, into one of the various aspects, aspects of compiling mm -hmm. and so on that you can identify because usually if you compile a program and there are errors, it, there are different, um, there are different, uh, um, you get different feedback from the program tells you the kind of error it is. And therefore, if you want the student to develop that strength, then what would be useful in a site like this is to have those I, broken out as subsets. Yeah. So syntax and logic. And, that, and logic could be, to be yeah. two sets, which in fact, there are different degrees of, of you know, in terms of um, development or in terms of performance in that area and therefore, be able to do it so so in that sense if if the the, the person who is generating the their um the rubric um has that mindset and going going in it can interrogate even your own practice in terms of what you're putting in the input so that to me was useful in the exercise so we really go much past much far past this but we recognize that if you if you give sketchy information if it's if it's vague if it's not detailed enough then you will get an output like this uh, like this and and well tragically you hopefully, hopefully there are no practitioners who are putting this forward and this is please, <laughs> please, this is, please, please this is not please let me let me let me, let me give a uh a, a disclaimer, a disclaimer. Yeah, yeah this is not any reflection on curtis um in, in particular because what oh. because curtis said what he would do with this is that he wouldn't usually break it out in more detail but with the usefulness of this exercise, it will enable them to get a frame to work with and then begin to put even more details. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's a good way to start. And yeah. I'm happy that we acknowledge that, hey, here are some of the apparent uh, weaknesses and, and challenges and constraints that if I am not clear in my prompt, this is a, these are some of the things that I would, I would possibly get. Um, something that I have to work on much more because uh, it makes sense putting the work up front to be clear and, and detailed as possible so that you can get something that is much more meaningful. It's just like the, uh, the GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. So you put in what you get. <laughs> All right. I don't know anybody else from that group wants to reflect. Jeffrey, I know you, you're in that group as well. Um, uh, Roland. Uh, yes, I, I want to say um, I only listened during this discussion and i think it was a good thing for me that i listened and um i think jeffrey made some very important points that i take away uh his um particular course i uh, is mathematical and and this whole system that we've been discussing seem not a fall uh, seems not a fall um, very squarely on mathematical subjects so that's the first thing um, the rubrics that we have been discussing, we are 
one can ask the question, um, uh, is this applicable to all areas of academic work? That's, that's the first thing that I reflect on. The second thing is that, yes, if you use the AI, um, you can get very quickly uh, a sort of spreadsheet, but uh, the spreadsheet could be trivial so that one then has to really go into it and um, make it sensible. But something that has been troubling me all afternoon, and I don't think it actually came up, is um, this distinction we're making between the marking scheme and the rubric. So for example, what's, what I've been reflecting on is, let us suppose you say content is a criterion. And then you have four levels of assessment for content. But what is the content you're talking about? Um, I, I have to then know, as well, these are the six things you should know. These are the content that I'm looking at and I'm going to be given marks for each one of those things. Then I could put you into those categories. Um, so um, I, I feel that I would use if that is a marking scheme, I'll use marking scheme and rubric. Um, I, I don't know if that works. I don't know what the, um, the educators say about that, but um, uh, all of these things are troubling me. Um, I, and I am particularly um, uh, impressed by um, what I think is Jeffrey was saying about this is mathematical subjects that he teaches and um, how this fits into the assessment of students. So that um, I think there's a lot to, th to think about, but the, 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 the good thing for this, for me, was that yes, I can use the, um, the AI to give me a quick um, something, and then I will have to do the work to make it make sense for me and my course. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, Ronald, thank you for that. And I, I wanna draw the, the, the wider thing of always fitness for purpose. Um, as educators, that's what we want to want to promote. Is this fit for the purpose of assessment in this particular discipline area? And and perhaps for mathematics, you may want to use more of a, a math scheme to really guide, because at the end of the day, you want to communicate whatever you how you're going to arrive at scoring the students. And however you do that, I think is what makes it a very transparent and powerful way for student-centered assessment approach. So it's not that mathematics wouldn't have rubrics is, or is, is those, are, but yes, I'm happy that you're troubled. And I think that being in that state of uh, conundrum, being in that conundrum would help. I, I subscribe to sub chaos theory and complexity theory. So out of this complexity, I'm hoping that you will now leave with an idea and reflect key takeaway that, hey, hey, I may not necessarily be able to use a rubric, but I can use a marking scheme to make my uh, clear to my students. This is how I am arriving at how I am going to arrive in assessing them. Is that okay? Yes, sir. I, I, um, I, I, I am very interested and like the whole idea of chaos theory and complexity theory. And I too, um, I, I take the point that you're making. I, I accept that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Curtis, and then I see Javed have his hand. Javed, go ahead, and then Curtis. Javed, did you want to make a point on? No, let Curtis go. I will okay, go after. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. I, I was just going to say that I feel somewhat the same about programming because I find the way I would have marked before, um, each program, there'd be some specific things I'm looking for, and I, I go step by step into different parts and I'll allocate marks. When to try so so the compilation thing for some of those things that we had to do, I found it's a little more difficult to ascribe the marks when um well okay the mark when it's like in the in the rubric form than when it's in, when it's as a mark scheme. Because it, it there's some there's some similarities with math in programming because you have logic and so on, other logic and so on involved. Thanks for that, Curtis. And it's clear, again, fitness for purpose. Um, perhaps the analytical rubric would, would have complicated things for the students as well. Because remember, you're communicating these things to the students. And if it is that the MAC scheme provides a more simpler way of communicating the assessment of the programming, 
then use that approach. Now, I was very flat. I said use an analytical rubric. In your case, you had a, although I think when I when you had four, how would they get a three? How would they get a two? And that that was my, um, you know, for in one of your max scheme, you had four, you had mark four max. But what if they get a two or a one? What would warrant them to get a two or a one rather than a four? And I think this is where, but, yeah. For that, I, I would have broken it down, but um, okay. that was kind of, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeffrey, I see your mic is on. I know Javed has to speak, but do you want to go ahead and speak? No, I think Ronald um, brought my thoughts across, so I wouldn't bother to delay further. He, I had some concerns, but he brought it across as far as the mathematical courses yeah. are concerned. I more need a, a marking scheme than a rubric. A rubric is fine if I'm given a project. Mm -hmm. But if yes. I have an exam with four, well, a midterm with four questions to answer in three hours, 45 minutes per question, I have a marking scheme. I'm not I'm not interested in your answer. Your answer could be wrong. You could make an error at the beginning and get it wrong. But I give marks for the steps as you go through. Excellent. Right? So it's more of a marking scheme than a rubric. But a rubric is fine for projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fitness for purpose. Javed? Right. So um, I have a question. And I want to use the reactions button to respond. Right, so if you if you feel like you were cheating in this exercise, give me a thumbs up. How we look in there? I'm not seeing any thumbs up on my end. I, I'm not seeing see... nobody. Right. So okay. Any teacher, educators, or anybody from the faculty of education in in our presence here, in the session. Anybody here? I'm from psychology, sociology, and politics. Okay. So kind of... We have a thumbs up. So we have one person who said that they felt as though they were cheated. Now, the reason why I'm asking this question is because you all would have experienced this activity as a student. Now, you will see what can happen, what you can produce when you use AI to do... Uh, an activity or let's say an assignment, there's still some level of information that the student need to um, go through, read, interpret before they generate proper prompts based on the assignment. So I'm, I'm raising this issue here because I know some of you a lot of a lot of us they we 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 tend to think that students using AI they are cheating, but I I leave that up to you who haven't gone through this activity, but I want you all to still acknowledge the fact that there's still some level of work that is being done. So some of you um journey process mentioned that well I can't take this thing wholesale, I need to, I need to beef it up. I need to add more information and make it um. I need to produce quality, right? So I need to go now and do more work. Also, some of you said that I need to put the right prompts. And in order to put the right prompts, you need to know exactly what the assignment is about and what and 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 maybe some theories behind it and so on and so forth. So I just want you all to bear in mind that um this is the same kind of interaction that students would have when using the platform. Now, you're going to find those outliers. You're going to find persons who might um, take exactly, just put in one prompt and take the, 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 the response and put it in, in a paper and submit it. You're going to find persons who will do that. And um, those are the persons who most likely, they cheat all the time, if you want to use it with cheating, right? So, so um, I hope that this experience not only enlightened us with regards to rubrics, developing a rubric, but also allowed us to appreciate the fact that AI could be a teaching assistant. AI could be the guide on the side. Because for me, it certainly has helped me develop a lot as well. You know, I'm I'm sure some of you realize that it was teaching you as well by giving you a giving you a response and then realizing, oh, I need to consider this and consider that. So that's it for me, Doctor. I don't want to talk too much. And 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 Javed, I didn't want to stop you, but uh, you are so right. Um, 
AI as a teaching assistant, because my follow-up question would be, how many of us would be comfortable with um, giving the assi assignment and giving a teaching assistant or work to come up with a rubric? Or is, is this something that we have to develop ourselves or we would have developed ourselves? Or is this something I will say, okay, I have a teaching assistant, they help me, I they have the outcomes, go ahead and create a, a rubric. Obviously, they will have to be trained. They'll have to know to, 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 to do these things. If we are thinking likewise, is this if, if this is cheating, then I'd, I'd perhaps begin to explore equivalency approach. And <laughs> why not do the work yourself? <laughs> Jeffrey, you're correct. But um, <laughs> as a mathematician, I, I'm, I'm mindful of persons who use calculators <laughs> <laughs> and persons who use tools like GeoGebra and and whether or not they should be using calculators and so forth. It's arguable. Um, and, uh, you know, there's so many tools that help, has helped man over the years. Uh, one one can use a donkey, one can use a car. And I think the key thing is getting to the destination and fitness for purpose. And I think from a social responsible standpoint, I am happy someone who is true to themselves, um, 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 Jeffrey, definitely don't compromise your, your standards and ethics. And so you will be true to yourself and not saying, hey, I don't want to feel compromised that I cheated. I will definitely not be using this tool. Mm -hmm. But for the for the for the vast majority who think to be socially responsible is not just to accept. And one of the key things is that you have this tool, you are the agent. Agency still relies in you. You can you can throw this away. You can decide that this is going to be part of a framework that I'm adopting, um, um and and so forth. Um. So this is one of the things that we would certainly want to live with. And I want to ask you as we close, um, what are your key takeaways? I'll take I'll take two or three, and then we will we will um finish because I certainly want to thank you for your contribution for um participating in this event. We we did plan to end at 3:30. We are 10 minutes beyond. And so if I just want one one or two persons, Ronald, I see your mic is already on. So I'll I'll start with you. And then maybe go to Patrice Prout. Um, key takeaways from today's session. All right, Javed, thank you so much. All right, I want to ask my colleagues, my colleagues to put the link to the evaluation in the chat. I want to thank you for giving us a comment. Um, do let us know how how um what we could do differently, but our community is come is 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 committed to continuous improvement, and do let us know what we could have done differently in this session today, and how you felt about the session. Um, I thank you for the time, and also want to wish you well for the day ahead. All right, but um, thank you so much for this. We will share the, the notes for today's session. I will add, what I will do is that I will, you have the link for the folder. I'm gonna ask Randy to link that Google Drive folder. I will add the presentations to that, but for all those who attended today's session, uh, we will also send it um, to you as an attachment. All right, thank you so much and look forward to seeing you. Please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, so when we do put those little how to videos, you get to see it first. Um, so if someone can put the link for the um, 